Welcome to the 2023 FIBA Women's Asia Cup in Sydney, Australia on Gadigal land. We are in for an enter entertaining contest between New Zealand and China here today. My name is Julia Montesano and joining me in commentary is former Great Britain coach, FIBA expert, Mark Clark. Mark, both teams are coming off a win, so spirits you, said you think would be pretty high in both what? camps. You'd hope they'd be pretty high, especially New Zealand after that huge win yesterday. Obviously, China won as expected. I'm, I'm really interested to see how New Zealand you know, really sort of face this challenge of China. Absolutely. China, they, of course, ranked second in the world, second in Asia. They narrowly missed out on winning the gold at the 2021 Asia Cup campaign, so they'll be looking to atone for that and go all the way. They've selected an extremely strong squad for it. The crowd are piling in, New Zealand and China fans both piling into Sydney Olympic Park. Here's how it's been so far today. Korea getting the job done over Lebanon, 76 to 54. And up next, of course, New Zealand taking on China. Here's how it looks in Group A. Korea on top, played two games, three points in hand. China second at the moment. New Zealand third and Lebanon fourth, looking at that relegation game. So. It'll be a very interesting times in Group A. You can see crowd piling in. We've got some Australia fans getting in pretty early and they may be cheering a bit for China as well. You can see like a, lot, a lot of China fans in the house. As you'd expect, they always come out and show up for their team, Mark. And that's why China games are so hard to win because the crowd comes in and, and impacts the game so much. Well, everywhere you go in the world, there's, there's a huge Chinese community and you're right. You know, it's their opportunity to get out and support their country. You know, as they're living away from home, this is their chance to really get behind their team. Let's now cross over to the China warm-up. Um, Han Shu, I think she's the one everyone's sort of talking about. She's put her name up for MVP already, just with the 17 points and 10 rebounds against Lebanon yesterday. She'll be very hard to stop this tournament, Mark, and hard well, to stop today too. She's going to be hard to stop, and she's hard to stop because they're so deep. You know, they score from you know pretty much every spot on the floor. Uh, four guys in double digits. Everybody played yesterday. It was a real team effort, and they keep intensity high because they rotate really well. Let's now take a look at New Zealand. They won a thriller over Korea. Mark, you were calling that game. They got the job, job done there by just two points. What can they do to win this game today? Well, I think that, that the first thing to say, it was a great performance. They were so efficient. They started really well, which gave them some confidence. But this, it was a bit, they were really shallow rotation yesterday. They got into foul trouble. It really did start to affect them. You know, five players didn't play. I fully expect coach to have to go deeper in the bench if they're going to be able to maintain over length of a tournament like this. We're now going to wait in anticipation and pause for the national anthems of both China and New Zealand. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd invite you to all be upstanding for the national anthem of China. invite you to remain upstanding for the national anthem of New Zealand.
So you just heard the national anthems of China and New Zealand. Always a great moment as the teams meet in the middle to exchange gifts and pleasantries before it gets a bit heated out on the court. And the referees on your screen now, Haja Jalajri, Kumiko Kumagai, and Chon Wing Leong are the ones officiating in front of us today. So they'll do, a, of course, a great job in keeping these two teams balanced. And speaking of balance, that is exactly what China are. We can individualise players, but as a collective mark, they're very hard to stop. That, that does two things to you. One, it, it means they can keep their defensive intensity high and they can be good in transition. Gives you all sorts of match-up issues. It gives coach the opportunity to look at strengths and weaknesses. And But uh, you, you mentioned right at the... Uh, right at the top of the game, you know. Zhu Han was just superb. She's like real quality. And uh, she gives every team a real issue just by sheer length and she's skilled. And once you've got size that's skilled, you, you've got so many options. Their starting lineup is, uh, is just, apart from her, they're pretty interchangeable. And uh, I think, as we said, everybody played yesterday. And uh, it's gonna give New Zealand a real issue but not a different issue than they faced yesterday because they had to face a lineup that was continually rotating in, in Korea. So protecting players and uh, being able to maintain that short rotation is going to be key for them. Coach Wei Zhang on the screen now. She's got a big job ahead of her. I think, you know, you do, you do back your team, but you do have to worry about this tournament because any day, any team on their day can come out and can take the win. So you've always got to be sharp. You've always got to be prepared, I'm sure. I haven't seen her smile all tournaments. She's, she's pretty prepared. She's well, pretty hard, headstrong. When so you, when you haven't won a major championship for 12 years, when you've been second so often, and yeah. with the expectation of, of China, it's going to weigh it's going to weigh heavy on a coach's shoulders. So uh, there's a lot of pressure. Once they get this first one out of the way, if they can win this tournament, they're in a great place. Starting lineup for New Zealand, and uh, it's going to be well without uh, Panina playing, it's it's going to be a task. You know, she was phenomenal yesterday. She played. The whole game uh, in, in in 40 minutes of us with Davidson was just phenomenal. But I'm not surprised she's not playing. She's heavily strapped. And I think they're going to look at this as uh, the whole tournament, not just this one game. So that gives chance for Coach Malloy to look at other players. And he's got some youngsters on that bench and size. So what a great opportunity for them to go get up against number two in the world. And a uh, little bit of a baptism of fire for some of these guys. But that's why you're on the national team. So what's each coach saying in their huddle right now, Mark? Do you think China have a different sort of strategy? New Zealand, obviously, without Davidson starting, what, what do they sort of well, look to there? China have all the options, so they can be flexible. I think New Zealand, the, the shorter they can make the game, uh, to keep the field goal attempts down, if they can manage that by through the possession, restrict turnovers. And most importantly about Davidson, they have to control the glass. Whatever, whatever New Zealand... Uh, put on the floor China have an answer it's just then who executes the best but uh, I'm sure in the pre-game discussions for China they want to keep the tempo high they want to press they want to actually force New Zealand to speed up um, but like with uh, Clarice Ledger Walker they've got the ability to control the ball New Zealand so I'm really not so much for today's game I'm intrigued to see how New Zealand deal with this in terms of what they might achieve on the whole tournament Good start is important for both teams. Then I'm sure that's what Guy Malloy will be saying to his troops at the moment. So it's the second ranked team in the world up against the 29th ranked team, New Zealand and China really, both desperate for success. New Zealand looking to get back on the world stage, back to the pinnacle of sport in the Olympics. China just looking to win gold, winning to, looking to win the Asia Cup, looking to go close and win the World Cup when it comes around next time around. And the crowd hoping so as well. They're willing their team onto the court and New Zealand about to walk on as well. So we're getting ready for the tip here at Sydney Olympic Park. We saw earlier on today, Korea getting the job done over Lebanon. And then we had Japan beating the Philippines. But up next, it's China and New Zealand. Welcome to Sydney Olympic Park in the FIBA Women's Asia Cup battle between New Zealand and China. And it's China who win the first tip. Wang will get things started to Yang and Han. All the big guns getting involved, but McGoldrick with crucial hands. 
And now New Zealand can try and draw first blood in this game. It's the way to announce yourself in the tournament. Didn't play at all yesterday and get this a block first time down the floor. And a player much larger than you as well. McGoldrick now on the offensive end. Couldn't bait that one in. Wang to Mong Lee. And again, blocked by Stockhill, but that one was a bit too aggressive. I love this for, for New Zealand. Like we, we talked about them yesterday, not wanting to take a backward step. They haven't, they really have, have not taken a backward step on either possession, taking it to the ring offensively, blocking hard, and then going to go for the next block. That China are going to have to really play physically hard to compete if New Zealand are going to take that attitude to it the whole way through. That's impressive, but again, especially with uh, McColdrick, didn't play yesterday, takes it to the ring, gets a block. Hey coach, as you should have played me yesterday, I'm ready to go. That's all she's telling him, which is great to see. And equally the same for Stockwell as well, who yeah. got the second block. Stockwell didn't get any minutes yesterday, and bang, here we go. Put me in the starting five more often. <laughs> That's right. That's all you can do. Pan from the corner. Can't get China off to that perfect start. So Dalton gets off and running. She was super impressive yesterday. Looks for Stockhill. Now Reed. Ledger Walker, Charlize. Back into Reed. And she's found on the way in. I'm loving this start by New Zealand. That's on both offensive ends. First Dalton pushed it, made a great decision to pull it out. And then the next time they're going hard against this Chinese defense. It's like, you've got to guard us. And if they're they were thinking this was going to be a New Zealand team coming out and saying, oh, we won yesterday, we win tomorrow, go for the playoff game. Straight away, I've answered that question. And that's, regardless of the result, that's a huge statement by them as a team. And New Zealand with their first points on the board, courtesy of Reed, who pops both three throws in. Reed was good yesterday, both, both ends. Double-double for her, 14 points, 11 rebounds. But China get themselves going through Pan. I think she, she faked the whole gym then. The whole gym took the fake as she went to the hoop. <laughs> Ledger Walker to Stockel. Back to Ledger Walker. Going to work on Young. And she gets a foul on the way in too. So two early fouls for China. And take a look at this from Paran. That's right, split the defense. Whole stadium had nowhere to look. As she got her first points on the board for China. Charlize Ledger Walker had a fantastic performance against Korea. 20 points, three rebounds, three assists. She's got such a promising future. She debuted wow. for New Zealand yeah. at 16 years old, and she's already one of the most impressive players at such a young age. Just 22 now. One of the other things, that the difference already in this game is that, you know, in this championship, there's been a, a huge number of threes taken by every team. At the mo this point in time, China took one, but they've been to the hole. New Zealand have been to the hole. It's, uh, it's a really aggressive start by both teams. Lee. Han. To Wang. And Reed with the good hands. Allows Ledger Walker to go. Pops up a two. That one's no good. Pan. Back into Wong. And now Han. Probably a bit higher up than where she'd like to be. So gives it to Lee. And then Pan will hope for back to back buckets here. Instead, dishes it out to Young, the captain, with the three. High level start though, a great inside outside option, but a high level start by both teams. Stockhill. Ledger Walker. Guarded by Hahn. This will be a tough task. And Hahn collects the rebound easily. Wang off and running. Hahn. Young. Back into Hahn. That's a great feed, but couldn't be finished off. Reed again, there to save the day for New Zealand, and she's going to stream up the court and shove Wong out of the way. So here's the three-pointer from Lee Wei Young. Nothing but net. China lead five to three. 
even though she made the three again, the, New Zealand, that's the second time they've done that. They've helped from the weak side and then they've rotated out of it. And that is still going to have to make a challenge shot. So it's, again, quality from New Zealand in the way they're trying to put this on the floor. Ledger Walker. Oh, just finds a way through, but couldn't get the finish. Wong. McGoldrick getting in the way. Just on the ledge of Walker, she's, uh, she's so good at playing in the space between any help and the player guard in her. Like yesterday, uh, her ability to stop and pop the, the short jump, she's already taken a couple of those. And you know, at the moment, she's missed them, but she's got the uh, she's got open looks. And that was, a, again, they, they've honored that. She made a second move. She's just blown a couple of shots she'd expect her to make. So I'm sure at 21, she's not going to dwell on missed shots. Mong Li now for China. Oh, great little feed to Han. And the crowd show their appreciation. Having two metres five can bow you out sometimes, right? <laughs> yep. Dalton out to Stockhill. Now Ledger Walker. Oh, nice bounce pass back into Stockhill. They just can't finish off these nice moves, New Zealand. Lee now. Can't convert the three. All you can say in those moments is you're getting good shots. Just stay positive. They will be disappointed they've missed those though. Dalton's been busy. So too Ledger Walker. Gets it back to Dalton. And now the shot clock's down to three. Dalton gets it back, can't reverse it in. Young, off and running. Han and Lee both want it. It ends up with Lee. Oh, just behind the back work there on Ledger Walker. But New Zealand cut it off and Reed looks for an option. Ledger Walker. McGoldrick. Spinning around Mong Lee. That's a clever move. I know I've said it before. I just. Can't say enough great things about the way New Zealand have approached this game. Guys who didn't play yesterday, not phased, make, doing what they they reason. That's the great thing about national team. Everyone can play. Pan can play as well. Four points for her to start this game. Reed, Dalton, Young with the active heads. Ledger Walker will have to chase it. And get out of the backcourt quickly. Stockwell provides some help. Ledger Walker up against Hard. Bounce pass oh. into Dalton. Fantastic move. New Zealand, they're going to have to start rotating soon, even though they've got players on the floor who didn't play yesterday. They look a little bit gassed. They've had to work so hard to start this well. Pan has to work hard as well, but she makes it look easy somehow. A big three. Jean-G has literally been the best player on the floor, though. Just different level. Wang interfered with by Stockhill. Good foul. Let's take a look at this basket here from McGoldrick. Her first point of the tournament, and what a way to do it. <laughs> Spinning around the China defense, and then Dalton getting the nice feed from Ledger Walker. Finishing off the good work. And Mark, you called for it. There's subs from both teams in here. Han, you can see today she's got 12, seven points. Last game against Lebanon, yesterday she had two, so she's already making a big difference. Mm. Coming off for a well-deserved rest. You know, confidence is contagious, and the way New Zealand have started, anyone coming off that bench should be able to get, really believe that they, they can make Huge contribution. McGoldrick to Crystal Ledger Walker on for her first minutes. Replacing her sister. Tamilo on as well in the background for her first minutes of the tournament. She'll get the ball here. She'll be key in going up against Han, you sense, and she gets the feed from Crystal Ledger Walker. Beck somehow pulled through the rebound. I think coach is right. The ball hit. I thought the ball hit the ring. Mm. 
wasn't a great shot, but it, it, I thought it hit the ring. Yeah, we certainly weren't aware of it in here. Yeah. Let's have a look at the replay here, Mark. Tell me what you think. No. Oh, no. no. So a good call from the referee. As always. As always. Wang just finds a lane and makes full use of it. Here's Stella Beck, the captain of New Zealand. Ledger Walker. Wang contesting the foul. But on the other end, she got that nice finish. So Wang with two early fouls, so she'll go for a walk to the bench. Guy Law giving some instructions to his team. And one Lee will come onto the floor in Wang's place. Tamilo. Ledger Walker. Still going, Ledger Walker. Still going, Ledger Walker. Just couldn't get the finish. And China moving it quickly up the floor. Gao couldn't finish it off. Beck. Trying to get around Lee. Ledger Walker comes at her. Tamilo just following everyone around. McGoldrick manages to keep it in. Dalton finds herself some space, pulls up. Can't convert. I just need a little bit more, I don't know if it's composure or belief. Probably a mixture of both. When they've got a lot of open looks that they just haven't completed. Han to leave for three. Dalton's there. Just love Dalton's contribution, never stops contributing. Either end of the floor, and a really great game off the bench yesterday. Here she is on cue, gets it to Beck, checks her feet, pulls up and drains it. A big three for New Zealand, puts the back within four. Zhang to Gao, Lee. To Young. Han pulls up for a log two. And Gal's right there to, to pop it in. Ledger Walker to Beck. McGoldrick. Back to Ledger Walker. They're not fighting an easy way in New Zealand. But Goldrick has to pull up from Log Rage. And it's a good idea because the number three hits the three. She's had a super start. Absolutely super start. Makes the three, rebounded, block shots. And that's a little bit like what we were talking about before the game. Limit the number of shots taken. Right at the bottom of the shot clock. So New Zealand with 38 seconds to work with until the end of the first period. They could fancy themselves taking the lead or at least leveling the scores if they can get a few good shots up. Here's Dalton in the corner. McGoldrick there for the offensive board. Ledger Walker wants the last shot or wants to at least slow down the shot clock. Tries to get around hard. Bounce pass into Dalton. Couldn't finish it off. And now China can have the last say on this first period through Young. And there's Zhang. That is why they are so good, China. They make you pay. And they've had a prolific first term. New Zealand gave everything to them, but China with their class and their poise lead 18 to New Zealand, 13 at the end of the first. The stats are on your screen. Mark Clark, what are you thinking when you see that? Well, I'm thinking two for 13 from two points has killed him a little bit. And it's not just the fact that it's two for 13. They've missed six, they've missed four layups. And they're not even, they're not even like Wuhan contested layups. You know, Dalton missed the last one. Uh, Ledger Walker had a couple. 
Also, Ledger Walker had a couple of really nice looks on that little pull-up. And yeah, they'll be, they'll, they won't be disappointed, they're only five down, but when they actually sit back and analyze it, all they had to do was make open layups and it would have been a tied up or they may have even led. I mean, the other, the other thing that comes out of the stats is the way they've competed. I think they've given up two offensive boards and it's, I just think it's a really, really super performance. And uh, this, this guy, Ezra, Ezra Maldrick, has, has just been, you know, epitomizes the way they've played, both ends of the floor. And it, they've had to deal with a huge performance by Mung Lee, who's just looked exceptional for, uh, for China. And China have got shots they wanted. And it's, coaches get a hard enough time. So the, the job that that coaching staff of New Zealand have done in the, in the 24 hours, China have made a couple of layouts because they've, they've decided to play a certain way. They help from the weak side, they rotate around that, and they're making people put the ball on the floor as much as possible. And they've done an excellent job at doing that. And some, when they get broken down, it may look bad. You see a couple of layups. But you put it in the context of the, uh, the 10 minutes, they're the only two really looks they've had. And when he looks at it, he'll go, that's right. That's, there, that's the decisions we've made. We'll give that. We'll try and play better defense on the ball. We don't want her to get going on the inside, and we'll make sure we rotate. They've done a super job. China have got answers, we said before the game. You know, that you play great defense, they're still making shots. And that's why those layups might come back to haunt New Zealand if they stay in this game. Absolutely tremendous first quarter by, by New Zealand, and China have had to really raise their level. Great game. You can see the QR code on your screen. That's for the courtside 1891 app. You can catch all the FIBA Women's Asia Cup news and scores and highlights. The second quarter tipping off, it is China leading New Zealand 18 to 13 here in Sydney, Australia for the FIBA Women's Asia Cup 2023 edition. Ledger Walker to Beck, it just falls out of her hands. It's not the start New Zealand were after. China conversely will hope to increase their lead. Lee. You can see defended by Grace Hunter on for her first minutes of the Asia Cup. Han. Wan Lee. Nice bit of footwork. And the shot was equally as good. But again, they made they made her make a move. They made her make the move as opposed to just give to the standstill jumper. Hunter trapped. Stockhill, Crystal Ledger Walker, spinning around Lee. Beck finds herself in the corner, wanted to go in a bit further, but confronted by Hard, so Ledger Walker pulled the trigger. Wow. I was just about to say they passed up some good looks to, to really take a tough one, but obviously that, unless they got sank really early, they are going to try and use the clock, and they're doing it really well. You see Ledger Walker will have to play a, a key role today, you said. Four points against Korea, three points already tonight. Mog Lee into Han. And a beautiful pass to Gao, but Stockel again in the way. Let's look at this bit of movement by Wan Lee. Left Hunter with nowhere to go. And then you see Ledger Walker up the other end with the big three. So we're going to... Referee's just deciding whether whether she had control. I don't really see how you can have control when you're falling out of bounds, but <laughs> rightly said it to a 14, not a, 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 new, a 22 left on the clock. Han, the mismatch, couldn't utilise it. And when you get into those situations, for her to take a jump shot, well, that's you've been successful. You know, she's trying to make a tougher shot than you than you than she'd like to make. And at this level, that's they're the numbers you're, they're the percentages you're dealing with. Jin couldn't fire. Just on her and one from five from the field now. So they're really pushing her this game to make those tough shots. Hunter. Charlize Ledger Walker. Makes it look so easy. That really is her game. That little gap between the defense and the help. She does such a great job at exploiting it. 
And there's the connection for Han. Beck now. The Ledger Walkers combine. Crystal dumping it off to Stockhill. She ran into Mogley. They're just making suit, possibly not the, the perfect decision, but they're making really solid decisions with the basketball. It's really accomplished. Ledger Walker, one of the fast two again, but Lee crossing over Hunter to get to the other side of the floor. And then it gets cut off. And Charlize gets it to Crystal Ledger Walker, to Beck. Hunter for her first points. Can't make it rain. Han to Gal. Lee to Mong Lee. Getting around Crystal Ledger Walker. Couldn't take the offensive rebound. And Charlize off and running. Goes baseline, gets it to Hunter. Beck into Stockel, the mismatch. And Hahn takes the rebound, but there was a foul call. Uh, okay, it was a con she had the mismatch, was contested, but they're the opportunities. If New Zealand have aspirations to win this game, those are the opportunities they have to take. Le make, add that to the list of the three open layups. Yeah, that's, they've, they've left 18 points out there. Uh, sorry, eight points out there, and it's uh, still so impressed with the way they've approached the game. So Stocker will stay out there despite three fouls, and Luar wants a three of her own. Instant impact from Luar. Well, I've got the down screen, and the defense chase, they didn't switch, so she had a chance to get her feet set and take the shot. It's really a primary option coming off that down screen. Stockel, Ledger Walker to Charlize Ledger Walker. It'll be a China ball. Here's Luo with a big conversion from like, long range. And you saw on the replay, Clarissa Ledger Walker kept, went under the screen, was a little late, and they got the option that uh, they would like to get on that down screen, which is the, one of the f few occasions they've managed to get that sort of primary option without having to put the ball on the floor, so. It's McGoldrick back on the floor for New Zealand, replacing Stockel. And Tamilo on as that tall presence too. Only, eight, only 18, Tamilo. This is an education for her. And there's a big learning piece, and she done it, did it successfully, her first task. She's just educated. Uh, she's just educated uh, to hang there about that she's a big kid. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see it here. Tamilo says, "Not in my house." See you later, you Tom. So a timeout called China 25, leading New Zealand 18. And we're going to head into China's timeout to see what coach Wei Zhong has to say. You know, we've been re really complimentary about uh, about New Zealand, but uh, in saying that, they're still down seven, and uh, China have found answers to get good shots. They just haven't converted as many as they did, obviously, against the Lebanon team yesterday. I think 60% yesterday, 30% today. Tells you how good New Zealand have been defensively. But uh, China still have enough to have the seven-point lead, which gives you a great indication of how good this Chinese team really is. 
New Zealand without Penita Davidson as well. She's in the full track suit. She was their dominant force yesterday with a double-double against Korea, the full 40 minutes. Oh. And then Tamilo again sends it back to New Zealand with that swat. Oh. She's feeling it. Victoria Tamilo says no. Lane 192 and long. She's got some length. She's got a huge wingspan. Lee to Gao keeps it in, but Ledger Walker's there to receive it. Mason on for her first minute, as you saw there. Tamilo, can she do it on the offensive end too? Ledger Walker. Giving it to McGoldrick from the corner. And it'll be a China ball. There is Davidson watching on. Great Doing decision. as much as she can from the sideline. Yeah, super decision on the floor as well in terms of drawing the defense, drawing the help, kicking it. Yeah, you asked about Demilo. Is she gonna Demilo, is she gonna comp you know, com contribute? She's trying to go after the offensive glass. It sounds like I'm, I'm a little bit pro New Zealand. I'm pro because they've really attacked this game really hard. Whoa. To Lee. To Yu Tong. With two shots to come. This is the field goal percentage is not where China want it to be, but in terms of they're being asked to make decisions, they're doing a really, really good job. I mean, they'll be disappointed about some of the shots they've missed, but uh, New Zealand are making them play at a level. They move, they've moved well off the ball. The opportunity to make the dump down is there. And this is only China's second trip to the free throw line. Mong Lee missed both of her free throws earlier in the game. And this is the line that we're at a little bit, should we say, more, more mobile and a little bit more interchangeable without uh, Zuhan on the floor. And in some ways in this game, they've looked a little bit more effective. And for New Zealand, we mentioned they're without Davidson, but without Tupaya as well, who had that shoulder injury yep. yesterday. So two of the big starting five presents out of this game. And Tog. Makes Dalton pay. And Gal just colliding into the photographers there. Luckily, they're all good. See, I, I, Whoa, heads up! Oh. <laughs> I hope you got the shot. <laughs> they're going to be unhappy with a turnover, and there was a lot of action on the bench saying, you know, give it to the wing, etc. But... You want to see China get expansive. You want to see him push the tempo. McGoldrick pulls up for a two. And Luo wants to push the tempo to Jin. Tong. Oh, Lee. Dishes it back out to Luo, who loves this spot. McGoldrick pulls down the boards for New Zealand. Crystal Ledger Walker. Tamilo trying to come across for the screen. Couldn't get the roll. And Jin's there to cut it off. Gao. Tong was interfered with. So Tamilo is the one with the foul to her name. You almost feel uh, New Zealand could take, could, I know it's only 3 325, you might want to hold on to it, but they could take a timeout right now. In, they've taken a few shots a little bit quicker. It's really, really difficult you know, mentally to stay in that place where you're going to explore it unless it's a wide open look. You're going to get deep on the clock. Just to refocus on that a little bit, it's, they've just really dried up offensively in this quarter. Here's Lee. Luo. And Young trying to make an instant impact. Just missing. Ledger Walker with some pace. 
gives it to McGoldrick. And now Beck confronted, but still working. Stella Beck. Crystal Ledger Walker. Back into Dalton, and it just flew out of her hands. They just start to look a little bit like fatigued a little bit. It's only, you know, you have to step down marginally, so the penetration is a little slower. The screen isn't set as well as it's been set for the first uh, 17 minutes of the game. Just don't let this get out of hand going into the half. They've only scored five points in the quarter of New Zealand. Rujong into Tung. And McGoldrick's there. She's been super impressive, yep. Ezra McGoldrick. Tamilo allows Ledger Walker to move. Gets it back. Ledger Walker looking to penetrate the China defense and then gives it straight to them. Young to Gao. Dalton's able to swat it out of bounds. So we've got a timeout call for New Zealand, but check out that swat from Dalton before. We head to Guy Malloy's timeout. China 27, leading New Zealand 18. It's going to be an interesting timeout because two minutes to go, 27-18. He, he, he really would love to go in you know, less than this. Only having five points, he just needs to refocus a little bit. Taylor's going to come off, kick it back over there. Crystal's pinning down for Stella. Kick it for Stella. Down again, and then Joseph DHO again. So snap, all right? Keep the talk going defensively. Here we go. Yeah, you know, you, yeah. So more of a tactical sort of message from Guy Malloy than one of sort of perseverance. So let's see what if New Zealand can execute what he's asked. Well, I think if whatever the, the snap play, you know, whatever his snap play is, I mean, his decision there is like, if I call a play that I know we can run well, then he's hoping that that execution and then being comfortable in the play will give him a good shot. They're under 20% from two-point range, and it, that's just killing them. Young. Lee. Into go. Finds herself some space and a basket to go with it. It's not so much about the seal, it's about the lack of ball pressure. The pass was just too easy. Dalton. Ledger Walker. To Beck. And they still can't see a basket, New Zealand. China on a 9 0 run. They're looking for more blood. They want to extend their lead. 29 to 18, less than 90 seconds to play in this opening half. Yuan Li. Yu Tug. Yes, please. Really nice. Really nice. As the, as the roll went dive, they got the nice lift. Sokil. To Beck. And now Dalton. Just falls out of her hands. And Yuan Li. Can give China some more momentum heading into half time. Although Beck, we know what a defensive machine she is, and she goes to work on the offensive end, and that's a much needed basket for New Zealand. Lee. Asking for a bit of urgency. Getting it into Rujong. Tug. Over Stockhill. We'll head to the line. And Stockhill, that's her fourth foul. So Coach Guy Beloy is going to 
bit of work to do in the half-time break to work out his big rotation, Bigs rotation. I have a little sympathy with Coach uh, Malloy on that one. I mean, he asks why. And uh, I didn't really see a lot. Either way, I didn't see a lot really wrong with the play. Made the hook, missed the hook. Defense is entitled to the position. And uh, still forced it to go over. And I think to an extent, the official thought there was going to be contact. I'm obviously going to be wrong if we get a replay of it, but that's how it looked <laughs> from here. Tong makes the pay. Two free throws. And Lee putting the pressure on Ledger Walker. Allows McGoldrick a bit of space. Ledger Walker can't break free from her fellow number four. Four seconds now for New Zealand. Ledger Walker from long range. Halftime buzzer sounds. And it's China who show why they're ranked second in the world. Gets an undermanned New Zealand team, it has to be said. No Penny to Davidson, no Talia Tupaya today. And at halftime, it's China, 33, leading New Zealand, 20. So a dominant half from China. We expected them to come out firing. They got a big win against Lebanon yesterday. They need to get the job done against New Zealand today, and then they'll hope to just keep on moving but a good spread of scorers from China we speak all about Shu Han but she's only played 13 minutes and we see from the stats it's what you've been saying all along for New Zealand it's their two-point range that's been killing them yeah, and, it, and it's it's a bad four for 19 it's not as if the defense has done a great job it's not as if they've had you know trouble getting the shot away they've just missed shots that they would expect to make and you know, that their leading scorer is, has got five, and, and that's with McGoldrick. They just haven't, they just haven't finished the plays they should finish. We could, we could come up with all sorts of really uh, interesting reasons why. But if you're two feet from the hoop and open, you're supposed to score. And at this level, they would expect to score. And I just think at the end of the, that it's easier to say, oh, they haven't scored as many points as China, which is obviously true, but. That's the only difference. It, they have got and had good looks. They have shortened the game to keep China to 33 uh, and force them to make 33 points with tough shots. It's been a really good performance. They've missed shots that they, they should and would normally make. And the trouble is when you're trying to shorten the game, if you then got to try and come back in the game, that takes us a real, a real effort mentally to say, well, we're still going to play that way. We can't rush. You know, try and work your way back in, win the next quarter, get it to single digits, all those sort of cliched statements. But uh, in the bigger picture, in the bigger picture of the tournament, New Zealand are still in a really positive place that they've had to go to the bench and have got answers. It's been really good for them. And I think for China, there'd be a sort of a little bit of disappointment, if you will. I mean, they are, of course, leading, but probably not as prolific as they could be. Well, yeah, I think that, that if you looked at it from that perspective, definitely. But what, uh, what coach will will be impressed with or pleased about like what Wei Zing will be impressed about is that they've had to play well and at this stage of the tournament to get a test is really going to help them going forward so at half time it's China once again leading the way 33 to New Zealand 20 we're going to take a little break and then we're going to be right back with you for the second half Let's see what New Zealand can bring here in Sydney, Australia for the FIBA Women's Asia Cup Group A Clash. You need character. You need chemistry. FIBA Basketball World Cup is the peak of the game. It's the toughest competition in the basketball world to win. That is why I will be there. Because when you win for one, you win for all. So some fresh players on the floor for both teams. Lin loses it. Oh, that is a clutch shot there from Chen. The little Hail Mary went all the way down the bottom of the net. 
time feeds Mauli against Wu. The spin move was great. Back to Harkul. Really sharing the ball around here, Lebanon. Using up all the shot clock time, but Hans there to reject it. You just can't shoot on top of her. You well, cannot. She did a great job. This is what the A division is about, the top division, and this is what one of the top teams in the world is about. This is what they need to aspire to. And there's Han, once again. Just so dominant. Vanessa DeJesus is Whoa. putting on a show. She's knocked down four of five threes, and the Opals have got problems. Exploring Nicholson, pass down low, Garvin working back door, adds another two. Ten seconds left now, or just under ten seconds now for Lebanon. Harkel just puts up a prayer! Oh my goodness! Rebecca Harkel points to her head! It's all about mindset here for Lebanon. They are this game. Now China really running with some tempo now. Mong Lee takes it all the way and one! And the China fans say count that! The Jubok hesitates. Needs a pass, finds a pass, Beck attacks it, drops it inside. Davidson is blocked, doesn't get the roll, and Career will get the rebound, and they get it back, and Davidson puts down the two. Miyazaki now, Motohashi, what a great feed!
Welcome back to Sydney Olympic Park. It is half time, about to tip off in the third term. It's China 33 leading New Zealand 20 in this Group A FIBA Women's Asia Cup clash. Both teams beginning to return to the floor. A big crowd turning up as always to support China and New Zealand as well. Our friends from across the ditch here out in force as well. And China, the game leaders, Pan with seven points, Han with six rebounds and Lee with five assists. So the, the names you'd expect to be performing, Mark, and you sense if New Zealand keep going the way they're going, China might be able to take their game to a new level. Well, I think they've already, they've forced them to look at second options. They've forced them to make the extra pass. They've, uh, New Zealand defense has really asked some questions. And as you said, right at the beginning of the game, you know, China have answers. You know, they have a lot of depth and, you know, uh, Pan has been exceptional. I think I, it's not so much that she has seven today and two yesterday. She's, just, she's made shots that she can make it against anybody. It's not as if she's got cheap ones or she's had to make some tough ones. She looks really good. Good athlete from that spot, good size, and, and handles the ball really well going to the hoop. You can't say enough great things about these guys, though. Without two starters, uh, they've really managed to compete, and, and they'll be disappointed when they look at the Rima McGoldrick, having not played yesterday, has just been exceptional. And, uh, you know, leading this team in points and, uh, and rebounds and sending a little message to the coach as, you know, if you need me, I'm ready. And uh, she's definitely been ready in this game. And then... You, just the uh, the other, you know, the youngster, you know, 18 years old, um, Tamilo has been like, what an education for her. But then her blocks have been exceptional. McGoldrick in shot with the points and, and the rebounds. I just like the way they've gone about the game, not just from their physical effort, but also technically they've done a really nice job defensively. And they just got tired offensively down the end of the game and they'd missed some open looks that aren't just open looks. They were talking about wide open layups. And uh, they just keep, keep doing the same thing, keep trying to keep the game short. Don't let China run up and down on them. And they're, they're going to be in good shape, not just for this game. I think we, whatever happens in the second half, uh, they've asked some good questions of China. It's going to help them as this tournament progresses. But New Zealand are putting themselves in a spot here where they can get to the semifinals. And if they can get to the semifinals, one, there's, Olympic, there's an Olympic pathway to potentially get to Paris. And two, they're in with a chance of a medal. Exactly right. They'll go, be going into the second half with a lot of belief, New Zealand. But I think we just saw the stat leaders there and their leading assist getter is Ledger Walker with one. So perhaps the strategy next for them is to maybe share the ball around a bit more this second half. It's hard to have a lot of assists when you're shooting 20% yeah. from two, though. So, <laughs> I mean, that's uh, that 20% number for two-point line. It, whatever else we talk about in this game, you can't beat China. You can't stay tight in a game with China shooting 20% from two. And uh, that's, as I say, that's going to be the thing when they look at the game, they'll find lots of positives, but they'll say, we got good looks and we didn't finish. And at this level, you know, we're talking about it now in terms of staying competitive. If they don't finish in a semi-final game, that costs them a medal. If they don't finish in a crossover game, they don't get a chance. That's what, that's the point that uh, they've got to really hammer home. So they head back to their bench with all the work to do against the world number two, China. Guy Malloy will have some final words for his team here. Of course, he's going to have to get used to coaching out on this floor. He's the interim coach of the Sydney Flames here in Australia. So this will be his home court. So he should know it quite well. And we'll certainly have a lot of strategies okay. for his team. So early communication with, with Lepi Cruz, particularly on handoffs. Now on the drops, you've got to get in front of the dribbler and backpedal retreat to the big girl. Got it? Okay. Once we get some dribble penetration, like if we've gone third side here and we're off this pick and we're turning the corner and we've got this roll, remember we need string spacing here. And that girl may have to move, so once we get to here, we're looking at that roll, maybe the pass is down low, but we want strike passes to go here or stop and come back behind. Or if you want dribble exit, Push that girl up, one, two. All right, look at our shooting drills. We've got to keep our poise. Get the shots we want to get. Here we go, come on. Some words of encouragement there for Guy Malloy. Some reassuring words, no doubt, for his team. 
undermanned, but not short on belief and not short in spirit. And on your screen now, you can scan the QR code to access the Courtside 1891 app. Streams, schedules and scores from the FIBA Women's Asia Cup. News and highlights all available on the App Store and Google Play. So tip-off in the second half here in Sydney, Australia. It's China 33 leading New Zealand 20. And Pan has got off to a flyer. He's in the action early again. Young. Good rebound there. Back out to Wang. And that's a great start. Charlize Ledger Walker, so much promise yesterday against Korea. She's doing well again today. And that one just rattles out. Just not falling for New Zealand, even from three point range. The pass just went past Mong Lee. Yeah, Mong and then that, that, that was a time she could have gone to the wing and changed the angle. We're going to get a replay of the open three. and. Didn't close out long, gave her the chance to have her feet set. Always a difficult moment defensively when you've been competing for the glass and you leave someone open. Reed. McGoldrick. Ledger Walker now. Goes underneath Hahn. Reed just chucks it up, gets her own rebound. That's impressive. McGoldrick, the leading point scorer for New Zealand, adds another three to her tally. Same scenario, loose ball, couldn't close out quick enough. Han now pulls up for a three of her own. Shu Han from downtown. Well, wow, she is a superstar and superstars do great things. Can shoot it from anywhere. Tamilo, been so impressive defensively, hasn't quite fired offensively. Mong Lee though. She absolutely has fired and somehow gets a pass away to Wong. Excellent stuff. China playing with a bit of tempo. Dalton. Gets it swatted away from her. And then hitting the deck hard. Ali, Pan and Tamilo in the middle of it all there too. Here's McGoldrick with that sweet shot from three-point land. And then you see Han just says, right back at ya. I've got this covered. And she extends her team's lead, 41 to 23. Ledger Walker pushes off Young. Shoots over the top of Han and makes it count. Charlize Ledger Walker showing her class in a New Zealand uniform. Young, Mong Lee for three. Han was there to rescue it. Couldn't get over the top of Tamilo, but the second time round she did. So the 18 year old there up against Han. Ledger Walker. Trying to go underneath the defense. And let's see, you'd be the judge at home. Did Ledger Walker let it off in time? It was very borderline. At least as borderline as that call not being called as going up. She ball faked and then went back up and then got fouled, but. Uh... Tough job out there, the referees. Certainly a job I wouldn't like to be doing. Oh, <laughs> I'm much happier sitting here. Best seats in the house. Dalton. Tamilo. Well, we, we're always fortunate we get to watch teams practice and Tamilo's got to be confident on that. She looked in, in, in practice that we watched with New Zealand. She's good mid-range. She, you know, she has nice touch. She's got to be confident. She's got to hit the, that shot in the same rhythm. She takes some practices every day. McGoldrick, good defending Lee. Young. 
into Hahn. They share it around and eventually ends up in the capable hands of Wong. Who gets it back. Hahn against Tamilo. Ledger Walker getting around Young. And slowing up a bit. The crowd getting very vocal in the background. Tamilo, what a Dalton on the run. Instead, just lost the ball. And Young's got an open look at the basket on the other end. Well, you're beginning to see the first signs of just the, the Chinese pressure really taking New Zealand out of what they want to run. Here's Ledger Walker. Tamilo on the putback. Tamilo might need to get spend some time getting herself together again. Young on the opposite end. China now lead by 22 points. Timeout called by Guy Malloy, but first let's look at this easy look from Young. And then back to back for her. Mong Li this time helping her out. Let's take a listen to Guy Malloy. Okay, so you're the one, you're the two, uh, three, yep, five now, four. Okay. We're going to go to pass to Stella on the four action, but we're not going to engage with the corner. So fake that, and then we're going to come right back to the middle. All right, Tara, you start low. Okay, now you're going to come up. As she's coming up to set this pick here, Stella, we want you to go, and all the way through. You're going to pick and pop. We'll get that look on a shot, or even better, you'll have a close out and drive on your right hand. All right, we'll really attack that. And we've got to keep spotting up and keep cutting and redriving. Dig in with the defense. Turn. Commit to the tagging, guys. Commit to that. Don't go away from that. Well, if you, if you think back to the first half, can't really think of more than one or two occasions where China had unopposed stuff in the break. They've already created opportunities off their defense in this third quarter. And the 20% from the field for, for New Zealand is a different type of 20% now. They haven't had open looks. They haven't managed to get to the ring, and it's the Chinese defense really has really begun to, to wear them down. You saw on your screen there, ominous signs for New Zealand fans. Shu Han on the verge of a double-double again. Nine points, ten rebounds at the moment, and a block to go with it on Reed. Lee. Pan. Drains it. That's how they run the fast break. Just Han got down the floor, dragged the defense to the to the to the circle. Han just popped out, knocked down the wide open look. All five ran. Reed dishing it into Stella Beck, which is who Guy Malloy wanted to go, but she's obstructed there. And the chuck gonna get a look at that open three. You saw all the defenses dragged down as Hahn just gets to the front of the ring, but and down the other end, everybody in a red shirt's in a passing lane now. The pressure on the pass is just a step faster than the first half. And this time, Pan a bit wavered with the pass, but she's been ultra impressive. Ten points, three rebounds, two assists for John Chi Pan. China leading by 25 points. Just hit over the halfway mark of the third period. Reed into Ledger Walker. Hans there for the pickup. Mong Li off and running. She wants a piece of this party. And gives Ledger Walker a little stand out as she goes. Heading to the charity stripe for the end one. This is quick. This is really quick. And just Ledger, a little look. Ledger Walker was just, let's just say, a half a step late because she'd already picked the ball up when she appeared. She may have had her feet set, but she there was no there was no space to land by the time that uh, 
when he started to let, you know, went to land. He was there when she took off. Lee makes the M1. And believe it or not, that's her first points for the game. Ledger uh, Walker. It's a very team orientated system, isn't it? I mean, she doesn't mind because when she's penetrated the last few times, she's kicked it. Crystal Ledger Walker now confronted. Stockhill finds some space. Again, not the basket. And that two point field goal percentage keeps dropping. Mong Lee for back to back buckets, scoops it in. She is a menace on the court. Mong Lee. Here she is on the defensive end, continuing to cause havoc. Ledger Walker. New Zealand just stagnant at the moment. And Ledger Walker loses it. Shot clock goes off. That's a disastrous offensive play, really, for New Zealand. There's no urgency. And Mong Lee at the opposite end. She is on fire. Well, that answers your question, doesn't it, in terms of, oh, yeah, that's her first point. The right person takes shots for China, and she's feeling it, so it's her turn, and the rest of the team know that. All of a sudden, she's ballooned up to eight points for the game. Four assists, two rebounds. And again, they're off and running China through Jin. Where's Mong Li? Instead, shares it with Han, who gets in on the act. A double-double for Shu Han. And no wonder why a timeout's called. China on a fantastic run, leading 60 points to 25. Two minutes 48 left in the third quarter. Let's take a look at this from Mong Lee. Just getting to work. Breathing some life into her game. She wants it. Give it to me. I'll drain it. And just let us all know that it is a three indeed. <laughs> Let's listen into the timeout. Up fake, score it, take your time. So our, the precision of our passing is really important now. And also when we get perimeter shots, we've got to be able to step up and knock them down. Everyone's gone really negative offensively. So we need to keep the same poise and just be prepared to make the plays late. Okay, so you're the one, you're the two and the three, four and five. Okay, uh, this play here, we're going to run fire, fire. So dribble it away and go and get the downstream for the wing to come high. It'll be one of you guys, all right? Look to make a play from there. Here we go. Remember, if you're not open, curl this. Yeah. So New Zealand on the end of a 15-0 run from China. 27 points to five in this third period. Shu Han with the double-double. 11 points and 12 rebounds. It's just all stats that Guy Malloy does not want to hear. Yeah, but the, the, the good thing for him, which it was, an I think, an impressive sort of timeout for him, is he's still focusing on what he wants his, his side to do. He, he spoke at the beginning of the tournament about how inexperienced that they are, and they are. There's uh, yeah, just two players that played in 2021, so... This is a real le steep learning curve for him. Beck, McGoldrick, the one shining light, hasn't been able to get going in this third period. Ledger Walker. Beck. Stockhill comes in. Ledger Walker still can't find space and just has to put up a shot. And co coaching the timeout talks about things like you know, movement on the perimeter, precision on the pass, all the things that at this level, if you don't do them well, get exposed by defense that's putting pressure under you. You know, week in, week out, this, you know, this team hasn't experienced that as a group, hasn't been in tournament play. So he's sticking, I'm sure, to what he talked about before they even came into the game, about what they were gonna, how they were going to approach this game. And he's still asking them to be positive. He's still asking them to execute. They've got to get out of this game in a positive frame of mind. I'm sure they will. Ledger Walker spinning, not scoring. And Wan Lee seeing some minutes. To Mong Lee. 
Gao, Li. So a foul called on Stella Beck was the one who committed the foul. She's just having a look at the big screen that make triple sure. <laughs> it's not going to help you, I'm afraid. As if referees don't have enough things that <laughs> the video replays being shown to players. Lee. Mong Lee. Kicks it out. Here's Wan Lee. Gao. Then a mop up. Mong Lee thought about the long three. Gao goes in. And it comes out to New Zealand. That's good defensive pressure. Paris Mason to Hunter. Two players that haven't scored for New Zealand this tournament yet. Ledger Walker will be hoping to add to her tally. Beck. Getting around Mong Lee and scooping it in. Stella Beck. Their inspirational captain. But Mong Lee, speaking of inspirational, can't knock that one down. Wan Lee. They want to use up all the 12 seconds on the shot clock. But Lee pulls the trigger because she's found some space. And another three to add to China's tally. Five three-pointers in this third period alone from China. And they've really stepped up their game from beyond range. So to Estella Beck, she never stops working, scoops that one in. But then China just taking the time, and then Lee finds a spot and finds the bottom of the net. Well, it's, it's just watching New Zealand get tired in front of your eyes because the execution from China stayed at the same level. And now they've been asked to make wide open shots, which they didn't have the opportunity to do in that first half. And the way that uh, Mong Lee has just taken over in terms of her physical presence on the floor is impressive to watch. Regardless of the opposition, she's now feeling it, so she's seen a lot of the ball. Her team understand that. And uh, this is, um, you know, for, in both teams, because I don't think New Zealand would have come into this game expecting to win. They've still got to get something positive out of it, and 27 points is tough to see some positive, but... So China leading 65 to 27 at the end of the third period. Let's take a look at the stats from the game. Still that two-point percentage for New Zealand, Mark, is not helping oh, them. Just, you know, what, what can you say about it? The other thing is, you know, 54 shots against the 43 shots in terms of this a field goal attempts. That, some of that is second, some of that is second chance points. Some of that is the turnovers they're now generating. And it's, it's the way against a good team that's deep that the pressure just builds and builds and builds and your tiredness and under pressure, if you're not used to that, you're going to make you're going to make more mistakes, and it's it's almost like a textbook situation. But again, I keep going back to the fact that Coach Malloy has, must have set objectives out for this team, and he, I I would assume he was probably way above expectations at the half because they were just in the game. But uh, I do like the way this Chinese team play as a team. They've got a really nice feel about the way they share the basketball. There's no one on the team that has to be the scorer. Everyone's prepared to be a scorer, but they don't have to be the scorer. And that's that's tough to get at national team level. I know they've got a lot of continuity. Eight players from the World Club, six players played in the last uh, Asia Cup. So there's a lot of continuity, so you can build. But it's still tough. Every player that comes on a national team is used to being a, a major player. To ask anyone to take a secondary role, you know, it takes someone giving a commitment to the team. And that's what this Chinese thing is. It's about commitment to the team. I do hope Coach enjoys herself, though. She does look <laughs> as though the world is on her shoulders, but uh, she's done, a, I think, a super job in getting this team to... It's just the culture of the team seems really good. And why wouldn't it be good as we tip off the fourth quarter and China come into it with a strong lead, 65 to 27. Young can't quite get them off to a good start, but there is a foul call. 
I don't think I don't think coach is going to like that shot because it wasn't like a definite move. I'm going to attack it. If they step off me, I shoot it. It's just oh, I'm I'm sort of open. I'll put up the shot. Didn't look in rhythm. So Ledger Walker now. I haven't seen much of Charlize Ledger Walker. I think that tells you a lot about where the aspiration for the game is. It's all about tomorrow. That's right. Beck. Ledger Walker. Nice rip through. You know, if someone's gonna if someone's gonna be uptight, you know, you rip it through hard and fast, and they reach at it and you protect it, you are gonna get the call. So you're right, it is probably all about tomorrow in New Zealand's eyes. Well, when tomorrow puts them into uh, a playoff game where they, you've got to say, they would be expected to win the way the crossovers look. Up against Lebanon, of course. Ledger Walker can't convert the three. Beck's there again. And nice you just win. can't fault the commitment of oh, Stella Beck. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll tell you what, the commitment of Juan Lee is equally as good because Tong has another basket. You know, New Zealand have to spend 20 seconds trying to really make a tough one. Transition straight at the ring. New Zealand's transition nowhere near what it was in the first half. Ledger Walker. Out to Beck. Gets it back from Stockhill. And it'll be a China ball once again. A few subs on the floor once again. See John Chipan hopping on. And Shu Han about to enter the floor as well. Just has to wait for the time being. Wan Li. Li Wei Young. That one just falls out of bounds. So now we see Shu Han come onto the floor. It's the applause of the crowd, but Yu Tong can take a seat. Very proud of herself and her output. Eight points, two rebounds. Of course, can still add to that tally, but Ledger Walker finding it difficult out there at the moment. Well, the rest of her teammates are just standing looking at her. Yeah, you've got it. You bring it up. Got to keep moving off the basketball. Ledger Walker just keeps putting up shots, and Stella Beck's always there this time. Doesn't quite make it. And a sub here for New Zealand. Taylor Dalton back on the floor. I think that's a good move. Yeah. Ledger Walker looks a bit tired, looks a bit fatigued, a bit lost out there. And well, Dalton's she's got no impressed. friends. Yeah. You know, the, if you're resting the team and say, well, you're the guard, you bring it up for me. When you get it down here, I'll move. Yeah. Uh, you, you need a little bit more than that, especially against pressure. And uh, they were good in the first half. There was always an option to relieve the ball pressure. Han, Luo, and Pan. Back into Han. Getting to work on Dalton. And a foul called. I was just about to say what a great job yeah, Dalton was doing so because was I. she was in stance and I don't maybe if we if we get a look at it maybe she did initiate some of the contact but Harm was going hard at her and she wouldn't move and that's she's entitled to the space on the floor and I'll always favor a big player when they're trying to make moves if, if small players are coming underneath them and big players get called so many times for what's perceived as a clear out but I don't know what else she could have done. I mean, Dalton just stayed in stance and took the contact. And free throws as well, wasn't I don't, I don't. I didn't see Han shoot. Maybe that was just me, but... Uh, well, unless we've missed the call where she, <laughs> where she went to the turnaround and got hit on the way up, then fair enough. But I thought the whistle had gone by yeah, that point. Yeah, same. But either way, Han continues to add to her score tally. She's already got a double-double. See, that's the other thing. The reason we're sitting here is that we can't referee. <laughs> and the guys in grey can, so. Here's Dalton now. Let's see what she can do. Same problem. No one, no one moves. Hunter trying to get in on the action. 
But Hans there, as she has been all game. Wan Lee. Hans sets. Instead drives in herself with a bit of speed for the big girl. We can talk about specifics, but at the end of the day, she is an elite level player who has a real great set of skills. Hunter trying to spin around the wall. And we'll head to the line for two. Did a nice job, got the defense in the air, got the defense off balance, then made that second move. You can see there, Han tricked us all with a three and then drove straight in. More comfortable range for her. Tamilo's come back for New Zealand and uh, we've talked about how much you're learning and whatever on the floor. She struggled a little bit when she went out, a little bit of tiredness. It'd be interesting to see how she comes back now and has she had a conversation with the staff? Has she come back and hopefully see her be a little bit more solid? Because if she can give them you know, the, the confidence that she can be solid. At 18, this is a great opportunity for her to learn. So Grace Hunter in the game and in the tournament as well. Her first points, didn't play yesterday. Getting a great opportunity today. Pun. To Wan Lee, scoops it into Han. I seriously thought Han was going to dunk it then, just her reach. <laughs> she will one day. I'm convinced of it. Uh, a, a teammate has got to give her a pass to go get. She, should, she could have. <laughs> she could have actually sort of timed it a little better and gone straight up. But I love the fact that uh, she moves well into space and her teammate's time passes to her really well. Pun. Looking for Han, but instead found Lee. Wan Lee loves a long three. This time it didn't connect. Beck. Shining light with nine points, five rebounds for New Zealand. Hunter for three. That's better. And good reward for Grace Hunter. Wan Lee. Luo. Lee again tells her teammates to get moving, but Beck's there to pick it off for New Zealand. Dumps it into Tamilo. Mason's there to try and keep it in, but Juan Lee off and running. Dalton's got a bit of work to do because Jin can't scoop it in. And New Zealand off again. Oh, and a big collision in the backcourt. Gina Mason hitting the deck. Here's Hunter's three. And there was the big clash. Both players a bit slow to get up, naturally. Jin feeling it a bit more. And Mason actually is going to come off as a result of that clash. McGold drip back on the floor. It's one of those things where something happened that where and there was Jin contact, you know, someone was yep. taken out as the wrong word, but uh, referees obviously happy it was all incidental and people that uh, they have called the game pretty well so far, but uh, just a couple of questions at the end of the game. Here's Dalton. Five and a half minutes to play in this ball game. Then up next, it's Chinese Taipei up against Australia. Chinese Taipei coming off a loss. Australia a win. And a foul called on the floor. So Pan commits the foul. I know they've had straight different lineups on the floor throughout the whole game, but they've only got one player on the floor at the moment played any time yesterday. And uh, so I'm sure Coach Malloy is looking at this as a great opportunity to get people floor time. Hunter. Bounce pass to Milo. And that's a great setup. Hunter's penetration and decision was good because she saw the big help. Tamilo just has to take a little step towards the ball so she can meet it and go up straight away and not give the defense a chance to recover. Now she's got to step in and make her free throws. Free 
First one's a miss. And second one doesn't go in either. Beck. Dalton. Swatted out of her hands by Loire. And now Young. To Lee. Into Pan. And now Han once again. Moves so well. For a, for a player of her size, she moves really, really well. So a 40 point lead for China now. Beck to Hunt, uh, to Dalton, sorry. Gets it back. Into Tamila. That's a great find by Stella Beck. And great to see Tamila on the board. She's worked hard all game. Well, she had her hands up for that one and cut to a space hard. Earlier in the game, she's been a little bit guilty of standing and watching plays go on around her. Here's Shu Han. This time she's trapped, kicks it out to Young. And Dalton, active hands, wants to keep it in so desperately, reverses, reverses it in. And a good reward for her as well. New Zealand bench up and about, great to see them smiling. Every, every team needs a Dalton on them. Whatever she does, she's always in, in, in contributing. She's in passing lanes. She's the player getting back. And speaking of getting back, there's Wan Lee. Dalton. McGoldrick. Hunter. Here's Tamilo again, feeding Dalton. And now Beck with it. The foul called. Here's this look from Pan to Han. And then you see Beck's looked here to Tamilo. So, a few nice plays. One more to come for you from Taylor Dalton. Streaming up the other end. And gets herself another bucket for the game. So three minutes 20 left, China 75, leading New Zealand 37. New Zealand taking on Lebanon tomorrow. China up against Korea. And a good stop again from Dalton. I'm loving the energy from the New Zealand bench. It's with a scoreline like that, you can drop your head, but they're up and about. They're gonna get involved here in the timeout. China with the big lead, but we're going to go in and listen to the timeouts very shortly and see what the coaches have to say. And we're going to check in with Guy Malloy first. Okay, get the ball in. And we're running four down here. Who's my four man? Ezra, okay, we're running four. And I want you to give the handoff to Grace. Grace, you're bringing the ball up. Now, you're going to have to get open on the catch here. Go to Crystal. Josie, start low. Taylor's over here. So now sprinting up to set the pick. Sprinting up. Drive it really wide. Grace, walk away like you're not interested. Fire. Away screen. V cut. We're looking for Grace at the top on the shot. If you're open, take the shot. If not, you may have dribble penetration. Then we move after that. OK. Um, Still flat dropping on the big girl if she's back in there. Make sure we get in front of the ball. We don't have easy drives against this. Fire. It's another composed timeout from Guy Malloy. He's one of those coaches that just likes to run sets and run plays. He's not one that has the words of inspiration per se, but he just, he's a, got a measured approach. Well, and, and the other thing about that is that, well, obviously we're not, we're not privy to they they would they would have sat down before this game and set out the objectives and he, he do, does realize that this is another opportunity to try and execute better because he's got he's got the rest of this tournament to think about hunter and you also said you know the team are in it so the team are, the team are giving them that confidence and they're up for it and there's all that inspirational stuff is from within the group 
And then Hunter goes in and just steps and knocks the three. Seven points for her tonight. Two from four from the field. Zhang Luo sets her feet. Zhang back with it again. Li. She gets it back. She's got Dalton to contend with. Shot clock down to one for China. They get the rebound through Young. One more to come. It's the foul. Called, but here's the look from Grace Hunter. A great three from her. She's had a positive game, considering she didn't play yesterday. Out on the floor today. Here's Young hoping to convert the three-point play and does so. McGoldrick has to contend with Ru Zhang. Finding it so difficult. Luckily the foul was called. Should be shooting fouls, I think. Hmm. It is free throws yep. coming. 78 to 40, China lead. The other thing that Grace uh, Hunt has given, yes, yeah, she obviously is uh, comfortable shooting the three. Oh, Tamila doesn't like <laughs> what she sees on the camera. Not quite used to it yet in her first <laughs> international tournament. <laughs> but uh, what she's got to make sure she doesn't is, is, is turn off at the other end of the floor. She missed the box out. She didn't get back in transition. And, and you can see Coach Malloy on the sideline loving this and not loving that. And that's... You know, that's the way he'll go positive and negative with her. Luo. Ru Zhang. Luo once again. Fine Zhang. Tung couldn't quite collect the rebound. It allows Ledger Walker to move. McGoldrick. Dalton. One Stockhill. Gets her. And now Ledger Walker. Dalton deserves a three. That one just falls out. Wan Lee. Dalton right there with her. Here's Luo. Young. Zhang. A great move. Just fought her way through the defense. And the bucket to go as well. So under a minute left, China leading by 39. New Zealand hoping to cut that deficit ever so slightly. Stockhill, shot clock down to one. Dalton puts up the shot and banks it in. Tough look from Taylor Dalton, but she's good enough to convert that. Yep. And she doesn't stop. You know, what we're talking about, Hunter, there's no delay. She's straight back on defense. She picks people up. She must be a great teammate. Lee wants to put some icing on the cake, but Ledger Walker's there to chop it off. And they're just going to use up as much time as they can and maybe try for one more bucket this game. Hunter, a nice three to end things for New Zealand. But the story is all China's big winners here in Sydney. And they were led by the powerful Zhu Han. Final score, China 80, New Zealand 46. But a great performance from China. The teams get together and shake hands. Underman New Zealand, as we know, and a powerful force of China. So they will be proud of their performance, the Chinese team. New Zealand equally so, you sense. And they had a lot of leaders and contributors, China. Wan Lee with seven points. 
Luo with three, Tang with eight, Yang with three, Zhang with four, Gao with four, Li ten, Pan ten, Wang seven, Yang seven, Shu Han, the leader with 17 points, 13 rebounds. Jin was the only one that didn't score. But it doesn't matter to the fans. They adore their Chinese team. They've gone two from two in this Asia Cup tournament. And they head into their clash with Korea tomorrow with all the confidence in the world. And we take a look at the stats on your screen. Mark Clark, and it was all China. Well, it was all China, and China's level was pretty consistent throughout. They stepped the defense up in the second half, especially early on. Um, but from a from a New Zealand perspective, you know, they, 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 they would have got, I think, they'd have got everything they expected to get out of the game. They got great contributions off the bench. Hunter came in and led, all sco led their scorers with 10. And I think as, a, as an exercise for a team and a team developing, uh, it would have been good for them. China I would also have enjoyed the fact that they had to play well because th as they build into the tournament, they want a challenge. They want a different defensive look. They want to have to come up with some different answers. And, and I think especially in that first half, they did. But uh, the one thing that Coach Malloy will talk about from a, from a both negative and positive perspective is the fact that in the first half in particular, they had really good looks New Zealand and didn't complete plays. And that meant they were in a bit of a hole. And in games they need to win, they can't afford to miss. And it, he talked about composure. He talked about finishing the plays. And that's what they really, they really need to look at that. But overall, from both teams that have both got things out of that that's going to help them in the tournament, not least from a New Zealand perspective, that uh, they didn't have to play Davidson. They didn't have to play Tobias. And uh, they got contributions out of players who didn't play yesterday. From their perspective, probably ticked every box apart from field goal percentage. Apart from, from China, it's just rolling on, isn't it? It's just building into the tournament, getting better every game, and I think they did that today. So a great performance from the Chinese team. And we take a look at the standings in Group A. China now on top, New Zealand second, Korea third, and Lebanon fourth. So it's going to be, like, apart from China, it's going to be pretty tight. New Zealand, Korea, and Lebanon, all in their days can get it done. We saw Korea take the cake over Lebanon today, 76 to 54. But we saw how close it was between New Zealand and Korea. The clash with Lebanon tomorrow shapes up as a very important one. So that's how it looks in Group A. And we await up next the big Group B clash between Chinese Taipei and Australia. But from Sydney Olympic Park, it was China too good for New Zealand. 80 points to 46, getting the big win.